This conference will now be recorded. Good morning and Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays to you all in Secret Treasure Land. I'm Mark Starosiak. Today I'm going to present to you the other bookend, New York City. And I, I put together San Francisco. Hopefully you've seen that one. And uh, this is the other side of it. And real briefly, and I, I do want to try to stick to uh, this, the solve and not put too much commentary in the interest of time. Maybe that's for another session or another time. These work together. So I solved San Francisco and then worked a couple other ones and then came to New York before I was part of like the message boards really and didn't really understand this concept of bookends. And I guess JJP mentioned that they kind of work that way. And like in my solves, they do. So that's why I'm excited. That's why I put so much time and effort in these because where I ended up independently solving each one of them, they do fit really well. I think you'll see that. So I think there's some luck to that. Uh, it wasn't an intention. But in retrospect, it's like, wow, I'm glad they, they fit and work the way they do. So hopefully you will enjoy this one as well. So let's dive in. Okay. Got All right. So New York City, it is the bookend for san francisco and i made my pointer red here hopefully you can see that a little better and i do promise i think i've used the word like and write from a lifetime's worth in that last video so i i do apologize about that that got annoying i'm going to try my best not to use like and write in this one all right so the great giant is the verrazano narrows bridge it's the start of the puzzle. I mentioned this in San Francisco. In all of these puzzles, I believe there is a very distinct starting point. Now, some people out there on the course are like, oh, the, yeah, the, there isn't a great giant, or yes, there is. And I think it's the bridge. If, if you look at the coloring, and we'll get into that when we actually walk through solve here, the coloring and the shape, it just matches a bridge. And so I, I've been in New York a lot. I'm in, in finance. I run an investment company. And, but I didn't know this bridge existed. So kudos to my buddy, Kurt. Got to give him props. He Really, I roped him into this whole thing, and he was such a team player on it. So he went on some digs and stuff with me. And, and so we've had some fun with it. Me, clearly, way more into it than him. However, he's been really helpful in, in both San Francisco and here. So he used to live there. And he's like, yeah, the bridge. So we started investigating the bridge. So that was very very early on just looking at the visuals in my opinion it was it was a great fit so why not run and we did so we sort of started there and have never left it even though i've investigated I've worked all around the city i think this is a start so uh, that's that's the case then you must launch right your you must launch yourself right from there and uh, it's a great place to be i think for this one so it is a very short journey it's not long at all in fact it's hardly a journey unlike some of the other solves this one is very close there there is anywhere to go now i want you to put this in perspective if you look at the verse he takes half of the verse to describe where the box is i think that's important it tells you a few things well first of all if you're running all over the city or you've got a long journey i i think to reconsider that because it's probably not right and the box is going to be pretty hard to find i imagine you're spending all this time talking about it. so that's the perspective i think you, you need to have on these you have to ask these questions why and it's this way and what's going on with that okay so that's what i do at least and, and so i think that's interesting it's an interesting thing to keep in mind all right so i believe this is a one horse race that they central person to identify and once you do that i think you're about 95 percent of the way there so this one there just isn't uh a lot of mapping and it's really library right He's, he says this and I, I honestly the way i went and solved this it was very much oriented towards research so unlike some of the other solves where you do maybe a little bit of that um 
and uh, not here. I'm sorry. You do a little bit of research in, in these other puzzles. Here it is. I think he's right. It's library. It's a lot of research to build certainty around your answer and where you're at. So the other thing he says, uh, I believe he said, was that you can see everything in the painting from the big site. So if you're not, if you're like way up in the city somewhere, I hate to say this because I know some people are in Prospect Park, you don't see anything from there. So you need to have views. And then he gives you some orientation, which we'll get into. So why aren't you, uh, you know, though from the horse's mouth, he's telling you this. So why aren't you listening to that? I don't know. I don't know why you're banding it. It's because I think you're just running with your own idea and what you really think rather than kind of what's in front of you. So I, I try to, I just, I try to solve these things. I try to work with what's there and figure it out from there and not really go off the board too much. I think that's where people get into a lot of trouble. It's like they go off the board. No, stay on the board, work with what's there. All right. So again, here, there's little or no mapping. And I think the book is super important here. The fair people are at a gigantic certainty to the answer. And I'll show you that. So anyway, I like my horse a lot based on what's going on in the book. And I really didn't use the book at all in some of my other songs. So I tried to, but I just, I didn't really need to. So this puzzle might be the fine example of personal bias. I believe with all due respect, New Yorkers are great. I partnered up with a couple sets of people out in New York and, and those guys are great. Um, you're all great. You just have this incredible you know, history and whatever. Pride about your city, it's great. Part of the problem there is you, uh, there's a bias, right? And that, I think that's true for anyone in their city. They're like, there are parts of the city that are well-regarded, some that are. And that's just sort of known and believed. So here in New York, you've got a bias against certain areas, I think. And we'll get into that. And I believe that has hindered people because they're like, wow, there's no way it could be there. Maybe it is. And if it is, you know, you're, you're like everyone, not everyone, a lot of people think Brooklyn, oh, that's where he's from. And he, you know, I don't know. Was it supposed to be about Byron? No, I don't think so. So that's a bias. You got to just get rid of that and, and work on finding the best solution with what's there. And I, I, I do think folks are just focused in on an area and they got, it's got to be up here. I don't know. Does it? All right. So like San Francisco, the dig site, my proposed dig site is it's changed significantly. There's been man-made project right there. And I think that's really hindered it and maybe caused it to go away. So I, this area, I think is a mate would require major dig operation, like a lot of them and probably several days and several, like more than a few people, but to, to really see like, is maybe there's some artifacts left. There's like remnants of it, um, cause it's been potentially moved or changed. So I don't know, but I, I local, I've talked about this before, local presence you got to partner up with someone local and I'm not in one of these cities. So I have like a chance to go in, take my swing at it. And if it, if I get lucky, great. However, if I can partner with someone and then they can go back and do some more work. Like, I think that's where it's, where it's at in these things, unless you get super lucky, like you're absolutely right. And you're super lucky, you know, seven by seven box buried two to three feet. It's a shot in the dark, no matter what, if you're off by an inch or off by a mile, those sayings, absolutely true. So you got to, to get these things really out, got to have both. All right. So if you happen to find the box using the cell, please give me props. At least invite me to the ceremony. My, my girls, here we are. We went and did an operation in Roanoke Island, the uh, Wright Brothers and all that. And it was great. So Byron, score it. You know, he, this is what he wanted. And yeah, it was a once in a lifetime thing. And I might do a video on that at some point. It was, it was fascinating, interesting, and fun. All that. All right. So this is a horse race. I think we're trying to get to a person that can lead you right to where you should be. So who are you going to put up? I'm putting up AVB. That's my person. So I want to see who you're putting up. So, hey, I know how to pick horses. I go to the Derby. I've been there like 17 times. I roped Kurt in. And uh, this was a couple of years ago. We actually hit like this exotic bet. And it was great. It was like over a thousand bucks. I've never won anything like that. It's when that real long, long uh, shot came in. Uh, 
So, but now here, when it comes to these, don't take long shots. I think the exotic bets are wrong, okay? Flat out. The exotic bets are wrong. Like, go with the easy answer. Try to make that work. This thing was complicated enough. He didn't need to go seven layers deep and have some, like, massive geometrical, like, angles and all this. Like, no, I don't think that. I just don't. He didn't need to. So why would he? So I think you got to really question when you're trying to solve these things, like try to take the le path of least resistance. That's what I do. Okay. Maybe you like it, maybe you don't. Especially you engineers, like stop it, stop it. It's not a quadratic equation. <laughs> it was meant for younger people to get out there and explore and research, not to turn everything into some crazy, wicked, connected thing. And it takes nine pages to, you know, write it out. I just don't think that's right. All right, so I'm jumping in a little differently here. I'm going with the fair people first. And so well, why not the most obvious one, Spirit of 76. Okay, Spirit of 76, if you don't think this is associated with New York City, I'm not gonna debate that with you. I, I think it is. So when towers in the background, this I believe is a representation of Statue of Liberty. And of course, that's represented in the painting as well. So that's a leap of faith. There's nothing in here that says this gal sitting on this ferry boat is the Statue of Liberty. However, you do have to make some assumptions, right? So this is an assumption I'm making. If you don't want to make that assumption with me, hey, God bless you. I'm, I'm fine with that. I happen to believe this is about liberty and freedom, everything they're talking about. All right. so. Another connection to this, which really ruffled some feathers, I'm kind of glad it did, frankly, is this, in the, in the, the verse here, the, the words, it's, it's anger and hope, and time, hope is mentioned again, and so I'm looking really microscopically at this, as you know, if you're seeing anything that I'm doing, and I've got a magnifying glass out, and I see this hope X written and from a map perspective, at least, really near where I think the box is, if, if you overlay the image on, on that. So I put this out there, and it just causes a stir, like, no, that's the uh, enhanced image. So it can't be right. Uh, so and someone says, like, I disagree with this. Like, what are, you, man, what are you disagreeing with? I'm showing you what I see. And like, to me, it seems clearly hope X. Now, I didn't know Spirit of 76. I wasn't onto this. However, I, this to me connects them. And now JJP even said, sometimes I was right, this is the interview is doing with George and, and, and someone else, I can't remember his name. Uh, I sometimes even swear at people and small highlights, give them the finger, say hi. Like in uh, San Francisco, I do think the, the background you know, spires that I believe are part of the Golden Gate Bridge, you know, like, that does look like almost like middle fingers. <laughs> So uh, there are different things actually written in there. So on this one, at least, I'm trying to show you, yeah, I think this, I really think this is New York City, okay? And uh, hopefully there's not a whole lot of debate on that. However, I do think Hope X is written there, or at least Hope. And uh, someone sent me, well, here's the original. And I'm looking at the original real close, and I see it in there too. <laughs> so either, some, either the artist put it in there, well, either it's not really there, I think it is, or the artist put it there, or someone after the artist put it there. I didn't put it there, okay? I'm gonna come right out. I didn't put hope in there. So my the point in this is, yeah, look microscopically at these, because you can, if, if the artist put it in there, I wanna know about it. So recently, I this week, I posted something on Ronan, and it was microscopic somebody of course the hate starts coming out ah, you know why are you looking so closely at these things like think about the big picture well i am thinking about the big picture and i'm looking for supporting details and if if jjp puts something deliberately into a painting i want to know if there's a thousand of those i want to know every single one of them because it's going to help me synthesize all the information and hopefully get to the right answer isn't that what we're after so yes i want to know deliberate actions in the painting this is one of them. I, yeah. So this is super, super important to me. This is a, a cornerstone of, of New York. I don't think there's any, hopefully, too much debate around the New York idea. So at the very end of Spirit of 76, 
he's telling you where it is. Spear of 76 is usually found at the maximum distance from the monuments erected to her fame. Let that sink in for just a second. So he's telling you, get as far away from the Statue of Liberty as you can if the Spirit of 76 is a statue. All you people that don't believe it, just forget about this. Fast forward. For those of you who think it is, I want you to just contemplate that for a second. Okay? So if you're up in Battery Park, that's not very far. So I can certainly move all around the bay there and still see the statue. So this tip alone, I would argue to you, is telling you get pretty far away from it, like your maximum distance to still be able to see it. I hope that's not a stretch for you. Because it says right here, max distance from the monuments erect to her fame. Maybe you think the monument is something else. Fine. Where's your evidence? I think this one is the obvious answer. So I'm going with it. So I'm trying to get as far away from the statue and still see it. That's not Prospect Park. It's not Battery. Okay? And then we'll talk about fine-tuning that even more. And you all know this. But here's the one where, kudos to my New York crews. You know, hot quiz, what ferry is she on? Now, I'm not from New York. I've never, to my knowledge, been on a ferry. Now, I'm sitting there talking over coffee with a local. And he's like, yeah, you know, she's, uh, it's angled there. She's on the boat to Staten Island. Okay. So... This is what I'm at on this. Most everything in here is deliberate. It's intentional. If you think there's a lot of stuff in here that just happens to be random, that's fine. That's not my angle on this, okay? My angle on this is there was so much put into this that everything's deliberate. Most. So in this picture that they're showing us of Spirit of 76, She's on the boat to Staten Island. Do you think that's random? They could have picked any number of photos. This one clearly, they selected it or they took it. Even. So if it's not on Staten Island, then they made a massive error in, in this. Uh, they just weren't thinking about it. They're like, yeah, let's get a picture of, uh, you know, the bay and, and, you know, we want the Twin Towers back. And they just happened to just grab one. I don't think so. I think this is very intentional. So taking just this max distance from the statue, still being able to see it, and she's going to Staten. I know that's it's hard for many of you to swallow this idea. However, just using this one piece, I think is a, you know, it gives you a lot of the answer. So this speaks to the whole idea when you look at the boroughs, and like you're to rank order them. What do people like? Like who's at the bottom always? I think is Staten Island. No, I mean no uh, disrespect to those of you saying I. I've spent a lot of time on Staten Island in the last several months. Okay, it's a cool like you know, working man's town kind of thing. Uh, it's really neat. There, there's there's all these different intricacies too. Staten. Okay, it's the green borough. I think. So I have no, like, nothing but love for Staten Island. People in New York City don't seem to feel that way. So I think a lot of the reason why no one's concerned, not no one, fewer people are concerned Staten, it's at the bottom of the, the list on the boroughs. It's more exciting to be up in the city. And so they just say, eh, you know, Staten, there's nothing going on on there. You speak garbage down by. Yeah, what about Brooklyn? So... She's on the boat to Staten. I, well, at least that's what people are telling me. So I'm going to believe them. So that's a little setup for where we're headed. All right. Let's look at the maps. So are you, are you with me here? Is this blasphemous? Too blasphemous for you? I know if you're not on Staten, you've got all these reasons why you're where you're at. However, I'm looking at what's presented, and I'm taking it at face value. I, I'm trying to at least. So if you're not doing that, I encourage you to do it. I think that's how we get to the answer, folks. I don't think it's putting 
all these biases on top of it. And hey, it's got to be complicated. We're not taking what's there and using it. I just see people doing, they're going off way off the board on stuff. And it's, they're just imagining things, I think, ultimately. So why that isn't even debating that. I'm using what's there and I'm then trying to figure it out. So here, you've got the statue. And if you run just due south of that, if you're on this side of the bridge, okay, the, the Brooklyn side, you run out of real estate, I believe, right near Shore Road Park, okay? I've never been there, but again, I'm supposing you have to be able to see the Statue of Liberty. This gets back to some things I talked about, like in San Francisco. Why wouldn't he want to show the statue in Ellis Island? It's immigration, and it's that is quintessential New York City. So for you to not be able to see the statue, I think you're turning your back on it. I think you're 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 being foolish because he said you see everything. He says, uh, you know, just like in the in the, the floating image is, is that the statue of liberty? So it would just make sense to me. The statue of liberty has to be in this. So if you're not, I think that's taking a, a massive risk because it it you know if you're down in Coney Island, for example, I know there are people down there and. When I look out, it, that could be anywhere USA on the beach. There's nothing there that really speaks of New York City. They say, wow, the, you know, the rides and all that, but that's Coney Island. Like that, that's not New York City. Uh, it's in New York City, but let's say, so you don't get any views down there, of anything of the skyline, um, any of the bridges, of maybe the Verrazano a little bit, but you know, it's like, and by the way, you're not in the shadow of the bridge down in Coney Island. You're south of it. And so I'm going to show you just you know, from the angle of the sun. You, you have to be in between the great giant and the Statue of Liberty. For you to be in the shadow of, which I take him at his word, it's truly in the shadow. You have to be north of whatever your great giant is. And you also have to be south of the Statue of Liberty, don't you? So Coney doesn't fit that at all. So anyway, so this is where you run out of real estate to be able to see the uh, the statue, I think, is the Shore Road Park. So anything below this, I don't think works. So uh, that's just, I'm just using what's there. All right. However, if you go to the other side, you know, you actually can get further away from the statue and still see it from the other side. Now, I know about you. I'm, I'm, I'm on Spirit of 76. I think that tells us so much about this puzzle. So that area that you're still in the borough, because you can you can go like all the way down, there's that island down there that I think they were maybe talking about getting rid of or something. I don't know all the uh, history. To stay on the sort of mainland here, like Fort Wadsworth down here in the corner is further than the shore park. So if you're saying, well, based on Spirit of 76, I'm going to be up in, in Brooklyn. I'll tell you, I think there's a place further south, a max distance, not almost max, max distance. So the max distance from the statue is like right down on the other side of the bridge. So where do you think I'm going to be? I'm not going to push it and try to be up in Bay Ridge uh, or Queens or the Bronx or up at Battery Park or anything. I'll try to get as far away as I can be to the south. That's Wadsworth. It's real simple. Okay, so I, I use this. this I don't know how exactly this is like the, the angle of the sun. So your great giant has to be between. You have to be between the statue, pretty much to the south of it, and you have to have the great giant even further south of you to be in a shadow, don't you? All right. So what do we know about the location? I just mentioned that. So you also need well, views of the Isle of B. The obvious answer is Bedlow Island, in my opinion. So run with that. I know people, they'll go off the board. They'll say it's this, it's that, it's broken. It's all these other things. Like, what? Try to solve it with the easiest answer, okay? That's all I can tell you. That's what I'm trying to do. And this seems to me, historically and visually, something that makes sense. So why wouldn't he? I don't know. All right. We know what 
I think it's on Stan. Use Spirit of 76. And Byron's Daughters, I didn't see this. I've heard it, you know, seen it talked about on the message boards. Uh, they're on Stanton. I think it was, was it with Josh. And uh, their connection there. Anyway, because the, the implication was Staten Island. And so why are you on Staten Island? So I'm giving you a very easy way to be there. Why aren't you there? Okay, so my horse is on Staten Island. Okay. Max distance, we talked about that. It's it's Fort Wadsworth or Miriam. Okay, let's jump into Wooly Bully. So I want to give kudos to my boy, Victor Burns. Um, he found, and I did, someone else did, kudos to you as well. Uh, in talking with Vic on the message boards, this statue is in Central Park. So I think that's a great way to connect Wooly Bully to New York. Not only that, but we have Teddy. Right, we know the history of Teddy, New York, mayor, governor, and then president, and he's all over this book. He's in Charleston. This only makes sense if you try to say, "Wow, I don't think Teddy's connected to." Uh, well, certainly he's connected to Bully Bully. I think. If you think that's somebody else, let me know. But you know, his connection to New York City—it's undeniable. Like where else? Connecting him to like Charlotte or something? I don't know. So, Bully Bully. Like this is massive, it's massive. Uh, so if this is New York City, I think it is. We've got all this, these nuggets of information, not even nuggets, these are like the mother load about this puzzle. So he says right here, Wooly Bully is of Teutonic origin. And people think it is, I think he is. He's descended from these warriors, of Wagner, and he mentions German. Okay, so I didn't know what Teutonic origin was, frankly. So I had to look this up. So the, the Teutonic uh, order, or when you talk about Teutonic, you're talking about the Prussian Empire. Okay, Prussia, like it doesn't really exist anymore. Uh, and it is the, the sort of the, the, what eventually broke into these major countries like Germany, Poland, Russia, Lithuania, Estonia, I believe. So I'm going to show you that here in a sec. So I'm taking this at face value. Okay. If you don't uh, agree with it, then I'm okay. Let's debate it. Connection to New York City. So he's saying, I think this person is of Teutonic origin, meaning they're Prussian. Okay. However, in the same paragraph, the flavor is German. So I'm taking that at its word. So you talk about emigrating from the old world, Eastern European. Uh, he quickly adopted a patriotic fervor for his new land. And however, and served as the company mascot. And I had to look this up for Teddy Roosevelt's Rough Riders. Okay, so he's saying he's one of the mascots. Well, what are the mascots? It's like, I think there's a dog and something else and an eagle. Well, here we have Teddy sitting on the eagle like he's going for a ride. Like these guys look like they're best buddies to me. Don't you? Like, I don't know why that would, you'd put it there if, if they were enemies, let's say. So it looks to me like these guys are buddies, the Wooly Bully and Teddy. Now maybe Teddy is the Wooly Bully, but I, I mean, it says Wooly Bully is his mascot. So anyway, I'm just using what's here in Wooly Bully. And I think it's massively important. So now, Let's look at the Teutonic order. So you see like, this is not, this is very research oriented. You gotta dig. So there's no real mapping to be done. There's no real journey. It's, it's exactly what he said, okay? So here we are, this is Teutonic order. Now, by the way, if you look at the crests of all these major countries that comprise the Prussian empire, they all have the same eagle, okay? America has, this eagle, right, is our uh, mascot, so to speak. But all of these, Poland, Germany, Russia, now some of these are old, they're not exactly all from the same time. This is a really cool map here. So yeah, when you talk Prussia, you, uh, the, up near the Baltic, Polish, German, uh, one of the, the, the kings, King Frederick I, crowned himself at uh, Konigsberg, which is now uh, Kaliningrad, Russia. 
I think this is really important. So if you for a moment believe that Wooly Bully is right, that the person described in there is of Prussian origin, I think your person needs to be Prussian. Okay? I'm gonna let the cat out of the bag a little bit. My my guy is. Okay. My guy is. So uh, who are you gonna bring to the table that fits the Teutonic origin? I don't know. Maybe you got someone better. I hope you do. So let's look at the tax burden, okay? The tax burden is a real person, I think. In fact, it really resembles my horse, as it turns out. So let's just zoom in on the hands for a moment. And clearly, this character down here is very stylized, right? Very stylized. And there's a lot going on in there. I, I, I have some theories about it. I think there's some mapping, but I haven't, frankly, found a good solution to that. Some of the, the eyes and the mouth, like, yeah, I, I actually have a solution for that based on my dig site. Was it right? I don't know. Um, it's hard to tell. But in any case, I'm zooming in on these hands. I think this is real important. And, of course, the face. So I'm going to show you my guy. Like, this is my guy. This is my horse. So this hand position to me when I saw it, and of course, so I saw the we get to a spot. Now I'm going back through the book, and it's like, holy cow, right? Because Rascali is talked about, Russia is talked about in the tax burden. So if the puzzle's about Russians, or at least someone who is part Russian, uh, I think that connection's there too. Now maybe you can debate that, fine. I think the tax burden, at least in some ways, relates to the New York puzzle. Okay, so I'm going to come out of the uh, prezo here for a sec and just overlay this for you. So can you see that fit? So you got one hand making this kind of O, or it's closed, the, the index and in the in the, the thumb, and the other one's kind of open and kind of pointing. Now this guy isn't pointing, but the hand is you know spot on in terms of you know the angle and all that. So you know the only thing I did was rotate it a little bit to make it uh, you know sort of match from an angle perspective, but in terms of the placement of the hands. Yeah, I think I think this is now the face too. I will show you, Coverly, is a good fit. So so I think my guy is the tax burden, okay? And I don't know again what your horse looks like. Do you have a picture of your horse with the hands in the same spot? Now I'm going to throw you another one that uh, you might like is you know the hands of let's call it Rascali of the the woman in the image. She matches the same, okay, in terms of the hand placement. So let's look at that. I get that a little smaller. Okay, now particularly with my target guy. Ah, sorry. Skip. Okay. So I want you to just take a look at like her right hand matches perfectly with my guy. Now her uh, left hand. Over here, I think if you rotated it, the index finger is pointing down and she's kind of tucking. Like, is that a stretch? I don't know. Like this one for sure is an exact match. Now, is that vitally important? No. It to me, it's maybe it's a stretch. I don't know. It is a match visually, I think, without like going too far. Okay. So you with me here? Like this is this is where I'm headed. This is my my guy. I think he's that expert. And there he is. So what do we know about our target guy? Let me give you a little background on this. He was born in Bergendorf, king of Prussia in 1843. All right. So he's Prussian. Wooly Bully is Prussian. I don't know what more you need. He was an attorney and he spoke German. So of the flavors of Prussians, he was German. Back to Willie Bully, German flavor. He was personal friends of Teddy Roosevelt. Okay, I've got all these letters that they wrote and exchanged. They were working on projects together, I think around Ellis. And they were buddies, okay? Uh, you know, our guy served on, I think the, the I forget what it was, the, the hunt club that uh, Teddy or a conservation group, I think. 
He was personal friends with him. He was known to write quirky poetry, poking fun at himself and others. So I think that's important here as we get into the puzzle. So just keep that in mind. So in, in 1876, this is our guy. He helped found the German Legal Aid Society, which provided free legal services to who? Poor German immigrants in New York. This guy was an icon to these people. 14 years later, he became president. Throughout his leadership, he argued that the benefits of democracy should be available to all, regardless of nationality. Immigrants, he believed, made better citizens when they were treated justly. This was the voice for poor German immigrants. He was an attorney. So I want to ask you, do you think this is a guy Byron would, would feature? Um, like, I think so. Why not? So as we're doing the research and all that, this person, if he was an auto mechanic or something, I wouldn't be that interested in him. However, I think it's undeniable. Or at least if you said, hey, was, is this, this horse in the race, is this, is this one with Byron? It, absolutely. It fits exactly, doesn't it? All right, so I'm going to just stop there and go into the puzzle. So, and then I'm going to wrap it all together for you, like a nice little Christmas present. So in the shadow of the great giant, clearly the, the color, I don't want to spend too much time, the color in the image matches exactly to the bridge. And then uh, from, oops, So I'm going to just change this and show you, right? You know this. What a great fit that is. So run with it. It's a great fit. The color matches and the shape matches exactly the bridge. So why aren't you running with this? I don't know. You're a great giant. I guess you all these different answers to what it is. This one to me seems the most obvious. So I'm running with it. That's all. Maybe I'm oversimplifying. Maybe you're overcomplicating. All right, so this is an aerial of the bridge, and I went and grabbed the 1980 ones. Now, unlike other of the of the aerials that we can get, this one is crystal clear, or I, I believe this is 1980. So it's awesome. We've got just great visuals of this area at that era. So I'm saying find the arm that extends over slender path arm of the bridge. I don't think that's a stretch. So over here on the Hamilton side, which you know, by the way, on that side, you have to go like way north to get a view. You know, you've got paved paths here, which when you zoom into them, it looks fairly wide. Like you could get at least three or four pedestrians over here. This is all roads and okay? these aren't paths. So I'm comparing this path right on the shore, which is actually it looked to me like it's concrete. And then you've got over here this little guy. Boy, I, if you've made me choose slender path, this is a, a footpath, and it's undoubtedly it's made of dirt. You can tell. Now today it's actually paved. So the slender path under the bridge. I'm not on the Hamilton side, okay? In this one, I'm just not. I'm taking I'm at slender. Slenderist. I'm on this side. Okay. I think it's that simple. So let me kill the music here. So I actually went down there. So you hear the birds. And, and you can absolutely hear all these cars. We even see it. Okay, I'll take that for what it's worth. Absolutely, you hear and see the birds and look up the term whirring. Like the sound of rapidly vibrating wings. That's one of the definitions. So I, I, I don't often use the word whirring. Maybe you do. So I'd go look it up and I had to research what are they really talking about? You know, the, the flapping of wings. So as it turns out, this area, it's known for being a bird estuary. So it's, it is very lush down there and you know, it's not super developed. 
So you can see why the birds come you know, through there. So yeah, when you start to research this, it makes sense. So certainly cars bound all the time and it's loud when you're, when you're down there, of course. So you can see this is when Ophelia was rolling in, which was really bad because I couldn't see anything. But uh, yeah, I was just getting rained on and <clears throat> definitely was being a trooper to try to get some information. So this fits to me right under the bridge. It fits. So he's trying to orient you, I think. And this works, okay? It's, it's, it's easy. I'm not stretching. I'm not trying to make a whirring sound. It's like this, you know, click from somewhere. It, birds, okay? And are there cars? Yes, there are on this side. All right, is that simple? There we go. All right, so the next clue. The sign nearby speaks of Indies native, and I think you guys are on this, right? It's it's uh, Hamilton. He was an Indies native. And yes, there is a sign that would have gone up very shortly before he was down here with this puzzle. It, uh, city landmark in uh, 77, I think this plaque was put up. So this is where I'm at. I think it's easy, maybe too easy for you. I don't know. But it, this works across the way from this spot is the Indies native. It's Hamilton. And I've already showed you why I don't think it's on that other side. So this is the sign nearby. And uh, you can read it. I'm not sure it's any more complicated than that. All right, so this is our guy. This one, if there's a gap, maybe this is it. It's a little hard. So our guy was, he was an attorney, he wrote a lot. So maybe there's a three volume set that he put together. Uh, his last name, I believe, this is where I'm going with it, is, it has three vowels in it. So I think the vowels is a play on words, but it doesn't, doesn't really matter that much. Um, so, I'd love to know what the real answer is on this one, but there are ways to connect this to our guy. And, um, but it's not necessary in, in sort of getting to where we need to get to. All right, so, so here's very nearby there because there's, it's not telling you now where to go. It's saying now take twice as many steps east as the hour or more from the middle of the branch of the V tree. Uh, well, not the V tree. So I'm just showing you here, this is our target spot. So this is a V tree and I can get into all the details and I will. But in my opinion, 22 steps is the hour of that. Of course, the hour is 11 in, in this puzzle. So you know, what's 22 steps from a V in a tree? And now when I see branch, I'm thinking tree. There's two things branch, a road and a tree. So the easiest one to me is, is the tree. So in my target spot, is there a V tree that leads me you know, 22 feet away to a spot? And, and there is. So um, I'm going to just jump into the next one because I think it's super important. So look down and see simple runes in, in Rhapsodic Man's Soul. Now, that, that spot right here, this here are a sort of really big, obvious exposed roots. So in this area that we're at, which I'm going to reveal to you here, uh, maybe you know already, but uh, there's all of these old historic trees that are part of this area. And I looked at all of them extensively. There is really only one that has a, this exposed root system. And I tried to show you that here, um, which I do think is represented down here in the image. Maybe that's a stretch. I don't know. But it does have this sort of circular motion to it. And look, it's 40 years later. Are, are these exactly the same? Certainly not, they're, they're not. And they're, they're hard to see, right? So they've been covered up and maybe the grass is overgrown. Who knows what they looked like 40 years ago? However, I will tell you in this area that we're at, this is the only place. So you have a, I have a V tree. I'm gonna show you why that V tree, but I've got a, a V and a you know, branch of a V, the tree, and then 22 feet from that, I've got this exposed root system. There's no other place, no other spot in this area that has that, right? So, so to me, that's a target. That's, that makes sense. Uh, so I know y'all are going to try to put up uh, Gershwin, all right, as Rhapsodic Man. Because of Byron talking about Rhapsody in Blue and all that. I'm not sure how that fits. It certainly doesn't fit 
from, from where I sit into how I'm solving this. And maybe, again, people have all these things. Are you max distance? Are you headed to Staten? That's why I'm showing you those first, because I think those set the tone. And I, I think those guide you in. And there's some other reasons, too. So anyway, so this is where I'm at. I think it's roots. I don't think it's some deeply layered meaning. I think it's roots, just like he says, in soil, roots in soil. I, I'm not sure why we need to go beyond that. So we didn't know this, this area, there's not good maps, there's not good pictures, not good overheads. So I really, I had to go and do a recon mission. Um, I just got to check out the time here. All right, so I got a little time. Uh, anyway, I, I went, I, we had to go boots on the ground here to see if we had this tree that we were looking for, if we had roots in the soil. And as it turns out, there is in this spot. And around there, there, there isn't. There's only one spot where you have this mix. Now, I'm trying to trying to put together the uh, the image with what I see at the dig site. And yeah, I, I looked at this and it just looks so organic to me. It does look like root system. And that's what he says you're gonna see at the dig site. So I take him at his word. So Rhapsodic, when you start to you know, talk about the, the deeper meaning of that, and I think, again, you should go deep into the meaning of things in the verse, not necessarily way off the board to piece things together. But what is Rhapsodic means? It was you know, referred to classic Greek, a, a performer of epic poetry. So did this guy write poems? Yeah, he did. He wrote poetry, like quirky poetry to people. So I don't know if that's a connection here. It's helpful. And yeah, I think, I think that is a fit. And you can debate me on this. However, I'm gonna come back to Spirit of 76. I'm gonna come back to Wooly Bully. When you're running your horse against this, this guy, so could you say that this was a rep sigma? I think you can. I think you can. I can't make that connection. All right. So when you gaze north towards the Isle of B, which is my background here at night, this isn't the exact spot. It's real close. So this is what you see. You can absolutely see the whole skyline from here. And you can see the Isle of B. All right. So the big reveal, there's a tax burden. Here's our guy. Arthur von Briesen. This is my guy. So for all the reasons I mentioned to you, and I think so I, so why do I like his park? Like <laughs> the most uh, underrated, undiscovered, unknown park in the whole New York system. They even tell you this is von Briesen Park. This is where he had his home. Okay. And he wrote uh, a famous, I think book, uh, based on circumstances and that. But uh, this area is in, in, in the park itself where his home used to be. Now, there is there is nothing in this park. Again, I talked to the New York folks. Nobody knew about this. They're like, hey, I passed by there all the time. I didn't even know it existed. So this is kind of, it's a local dog run for people. There's absolutely nothing in there. There's no bathroom. There's no services. It's a field with trees and some paths. So the paths are a problem because they were redone in uh, 2001, I believe. And so, again, you're in this situation where right near where we think the box is, it's been worked on heavily. All right. So, so anyway, so when I first start looking at this, I say, yeah, this, okay, great job. What are the parks nearby? Well, Wadsworth, certainly. And then this little dinky park. So what do I do? I type in Von Briesen and I start to research who this guy was. When I see he's an immigration attorney, <laughs> like all of a sudden it goes like to the moon that this is a high probability area. That's what this guy did. He worked with the immigrants, German immigrants, it turns out. But he was Prussian, all that. Okay, so <laughs> this is why I like this guy. He's, he wasn't an auto mechanic. He fits exactly the person you would think would be featured in this hunt, in the treasure. So I... That's where I'm at, folks. Um, so this, the park, now let's, let's dive in. So the park itself is known for its old historic trees, okay? Trees, he's mentioning roots in soil and he's mentioning branches. Now, as we'll see in the image, there's trees in there that y'all haven't seen. I'm not sure why, I see them, maybe you don't, I don't know, I'm gonna show you that. So this is very organic. 
And unlike Chicago and let's say Cleveland, it's you don't have these human reference points. Like it's in a it's in a planter box that's never going to move. And I think that's why those are found, frankly, because it's it was sort of easy to, to not easy, but you you had this immovable area that was going to stay there until someone found it. Here, it's very organic, and he's he's using half the verse to guide you in. So that means it's going to be difficult. So are all these trees and the reference points, are they still there? That's the hard part here. So anyway, that's where we're at, folks. You can see the distance is very short. It's like half a mile, not even. Well, he's not taking you on a journey. So I know my solve has to be near the great giant. There, there's, he's not asking you to get on, on, on your horse at all. So this makes sense. This makes sense, doesn't it? Okay, now he never tells you go into the park. However, I think if you end up in this the right spot, you naturally are going to look around you. So is he going to stop in Wadsworth? And the, 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 the reason it's not Wadsworth, there's no battery imagery. These are all batteries here. There's a bunch of batteries. Okay? And they're, they're, it's like Planet of the Apes, truly. It looks like you know time has just been lost. Uh, it's really fascinating. I got a bunch of pictures on it, which I will post too. But this is battery weed down here, which plays into our bookend. Uh, but it's, it's really awesome down here. Definitely go and see it. Um, so there's no battery imagery. Unlike San Francisco, there's no battery image imagery in this one. So I'm not in the batteries. In San Francisco, there's tons of battery imagery. So I'm in the batteries. Here it's not. It's organic. And by the way, this park is very organic. That's all there is here. It fits. All right, so here's a little close-up. This is my horse. I like my horse a lot. This is a tree in the image. You can see it V's out, right? I don't know why. Maybe somebody's seen this as a tree. I think this is your V tree. And lo and behold, and I outlined it here, this is our V tree. So we went into this not knowing, truly, is this the right spot? And we needed this tree. And we needed it to be actually close to the water where you'd have a view. This fits it, okay? It fits it. Uh, I, we didn't know that because there's no re really good pictures. There's no, you can't walk this park in Google because there's nothing there. It's that uninteresting. Uh, it's a dog park, really. So we had to go boots on the ground. And if we had gone away, come away and there's no V tree there, this all of a sudden drops way down. Instead, we have this tree that really looks like what's in the image, okay? So zoom in on this thing. It's a flipping tree, okay? So this is our target tree. 22 steps away is this old historic tree. And I, it's a sycamore maybe. It's got this incredible root system. So I'll, I'll show you some other ones here. So this is it. This is from the site. This is our V tree. And 22 steps is right here. And this is that whole root system. So it's like there's a ton of trees in here. I think I, we, we felt like, oh, you've got to be near the shore. It's to have views, right? Probably of the gray giant. Absolutely of the statue. And you can see that from this site. you got to look through the trees, but you can see it. So that's the background here. It's This is a little closer to... Uh, to the, the the park that rail you can see this this uh, fence um, and you by the way there there is a gate you can walk through and walk all the way down it's really cool um so this is the view like off my shoulder and i'll show you some more of those but over here folks this is a tree this is a tree here and i've this is inverted uh, or reversed L look at it look real close at it. it's a tree now this side i don't think is okay so but this is a tree so you're looking through trees. And I, I believe, I'll show you this, I believe this is the bridge here. Makes sense. Um, so this is where I'm at, folks. I'm near the gray giant, super close. You can see it through the trees. And by the way, I'm looking through trees on the image. I don't know, maybe that's too simple for you. So the other, uh, the pointing idea, right? There I go using right. So I tried to set this up, and I know you might not like this. However, some of these 
because of these other connections with the book and the research and all that, I, I think they're less important. Um, so, you know, if I, I tried to get this lined up as best as I could, the bottom and it's inverted, right? I tried to line this up, the outline. Now, if I tilt this, all of a sudden, this little hint here doesn't work, right? So she's then pointing way south, maybe to Coney at this point. If I tilt the image over, that, as I mentioned to you, doesn't fit in my opinion. So it does, you can't see the statue from there. So yeah, I think this is a good match. I, I do, I, I think it's a good match. Is that the carnation, it's such a long carnation and if you follow the fingers down, tucked underneath, yeah, it's pointing right to the spot. So I don't care. Like, maybe you don't think that's a, I do care. Maybe that's a, too far of a stretch for you. However, to me, it's sort of the pointing idea. It's there in this instance. Okay. So the next one, this is where I have a little trouble with this solve, is uh, the mapping. And so I don't think there's a lot of mapping to be done here. However, I have been able to, you know, piece together. If you look at this, I think this up here, oops, is, is a nice fit for the upper part of her body. So, you know, you're wondering, like, people are looking at her, you know, her breasts, and why would you show those? So I think that's this old ball field here. So I'm going to jump in a little closer. So I think that's his ball field. That's his ball field's not there. So if you're looking at an overhead, this is gone. It's just a field now. But back then, it was a ball field. So it really lines up well with this component of the image. Right? So the head as well lines up. So this was a very, you know, this is a circular. So if I'm JJP, I'm looking at this. He's seen the outline of her, and maybe this is the rest of her body. Now, this is where it falls apart a bit. Right? So this lower half, you kind of have to scooch the painting over and would he have done that? I don't know. Again, I, I don't need this. I don't need this in this solve. I've got the verse, I've got all these, uh, you know, the, 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 the fair people, right? That work. And two, I would argue, there is no mapping here to be done. So do I need this overlay? And, and you might say, well, then that takes the salt down. Yeah. I got a Prussian guy. I've got the max distance, right? I've got all these other things. So it's a, I'm willing to, except that this, you know, this upper part at least, and then that makes the belt the bridge. That makes a lot of sense to me. So uh, this is where you have to, I think, maybe this is a little stretch, but I don't know. Um, so kind of like the this imagery here in the painting, uh, this kind of looks like a trail to me. This kind of looks like a trail. So it's inverted. Maybe you don't need to invert it. I think you do here, just like in San Francisco. Now you do pick up this, this is a dead, dead on fit. Um, this in the middle of the sash hanging down, right? So that's a good fit there. And now the wings sort of like coming off, these are a battery weed over here and this is uh, Wadsworth. So, you know, that's where I'm at here. So the other, you know, the bottom of that, this, uh, sort of very angular area, you know, this is Hope X down here, which is really close to our dig spot. So our dig spot's like right here. So Hope X, per the image, is like right here. So I don't know. I don't think I need that, though, in this instance. And maybe you disagree. So I know everybody's got an idea of who this floating woman is, and this is the best one I could find. Uh, the Lady of All Nations, that to me was strong. And then the sash in the middle is a very triangular type shape. Uh, so this was a, a woman in the Netherlands had an image of the Virgin Mary. And then this German painter, I don't know if that's a connection or not, uh, put this together. So I think this is really strong myself uh, because this Lady of All Nations idea. And this is the Statue of Liberty. So I like that connection, but I just want to throw that. So uh, just finishing out here, I only got a few more minutes, so I have to shut this down. So what is this up in here? And this is where I, I kind of struggled with this one, but yeah, the hands of the, of the uh, clock are pointing, and this is the gem up here, I believe. 
So people are trying to count these. I'm not sure that's useful, but there's stuff hidden under here. And this, this is a problem for me. I don't quite understand this. People are saying this is the subway. Yeah, maybe. I think this is Von Breesen here. And so my solution to it is this is this is uh, this is the park, and what I what I thought you'd see here is a very clear like all these trees are stacked up. Um, so uh, you don't really see that in here. I really tried to find that, but I think this is the gem. My hands are pointing there. It should be, uh, but this I think the answer here this is might be a stretch for you. I think this upside down Polish flag. This is Russia and this is German. This is uh, von Briesen. So the if you notice, uh, the, the the eagle cuts across all this. So how do you represent a person who's all these nationalities really, but primarily German? And so this is a you know, this is a German eagle. I think that's pretty clear to people. So the eagle is sort of cutting across both things. Now this is inverted. This is like the Singapore flag this way. So if you turn it with white on top of red. Maybe this is a stretch. It probably is. I don't know. Um, but I don't need this. You know, I don't need this for my song. That's my solution, though. Is if it if he turns it around, he makes it the Polish flag. Then it confuses people. It does look like Poland, and they're like, "Ah, is this about Polish immigrants?" So, uh, that's something you would do, though. I do think that's inversion idea. Something you would do. Okay. So, back in the old days, and this is a view of the city. This isn't the exact spot. It's really close. Uh, this is more towards the north end of the park, but you see this incredible view of, you know, the skyline. And I went back out this old picture. Uh, this area, when you're there, it's a pretty hard to see through it because it's really overgrown. Uh, this is as old as picture I find that kind of showed like I think they really manicured this previously, and you could really see well through it. So that was a concern for us. Like, oh, we can't really see because there's all these bushes and stuff. Like who knows at the time. What it was like but this is an old picture it looks like yeah it's summer maybe or spring but you can very clearly see through here today you cannot this is really overgrown all right so this is in the morning i mean it's it if you haven't been there to this park go up there it is phenomenal it's it's just great you're elevated you got all these awesome views so when you're standing around in these places i think boots on the ground right you can't help but think this is the place, or it's a good, it's a good option. All right, so this is the same shot from the same spot during the, you know, during the day. It's incredible down there. It's it's inspiring. All right, so this is my money shop. Okay, this is my bookends. This is it. This is where I'm putting my chips. So I showed you San Francisco. This is right at my dick spot. Notice Fort Point underneath the bridge. When I turn to my right. I see the skyline like this. Well, as it turns out, now this isn't the exact spot, it's, it's within feet. This is the view from my New York salt. I've got battery weed down here. And I look across and I see this magnificent bridge. And by the way, uh, the Verrazano displaced the Golden Gate as the longest suspension bridge in 1964. So they're kind of like brother and sister. I don't know, sisters, brothers, something. But they are absolutely, and they, they look real similar. So there's a history between these two bridges. One overtook the other. Uh, and then as I turn to my left and I look up towards the city, this is what I see. So this is the best I got, folks. I can't do any better than this. If these are indeed bookends, my solves are leading me to places where it's like a mirror image. So what is your bookend? Like, where are you? In New York, and what's the equivalent in San Francisco, or vice versa? This is where I'm at. I'm in a place for both of these. Now, as I mentioned, I solved these not with this idea at all. And so when you learn about this idea, then immediately you ask in your brain, do my, do my solves fit that idea that they're kind of mirror images bookends? They, they do. And so that was a eureka moment. It's like, wow, cool. You know, hey, maybe this, maybe these are right. So I don't know if you're way up in the city somewhere, like what's your equivalent? That's why I told you, you got to solve both of these, I think, to get a great degree of certainty. So this is the best I can do. This was what I got for you. That's my money shot. So here is the Golden Gate. Oh, wait a minute. No, this is the Verrazano before they painted it. Kind of looks like another bridge to me now. So this, I, this was like 1964. 
So here it is at night. It's spectacular. Yeah, it's, it's so cool. You gotta go up there and see it. And then again, this is the view when you look through the trees and you can see the Isle of B. All right, so it's like here's our dig site, here's bridge, we're in the shadow. This is it from the other side. Here's the V. So 22 steps is right up here. Now, here's the problem. This bench wasn't here. And these trails were all improved. Okay, so, you know, I'm showing you this because, uh, so here's the root system. It's a little hard. I had to play with the, the, the lighting and all that to br really bring it out. But when you go there, you can see it. It's just hard to represent it. So, like, I found these pictures on the internet. Uh, some guys, like, looks like they went in there and dug it. So, this is pretty deep. You know, this concrete goes down, I don't know, at least six or eight inches. And you get into all this aggregate like this, like old bricks and stuff. So maybe this was a brick trail and they just threw everything over the side. So in this particular area, next to this big tree with the root system, views, all that, you know, these, you can't, it's a little hard to see, but these are roots. So if this area is really, you know, if you're going to really go after this area, I think uh, it's going to be, Lots of people uh, with gloves sifting through things. This is like a multi-day operation and people. So yeah, this is the this is best I got for you. All right. And then you can see a little bit of Unbound Bruce and you can research him. Wildly fascinating guy. And uh, now I think he's he, like, this is my horse. Okay. So who's yours? So that's all I have for you today. I want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. And let me know your thoughts on this for sure. Uh, hopefully, this is something that gives you something more to, to chew on in terms of your own solves and, and how they fit into the big picture. So, all right. Thanks.